So, how do we gear champions to do well in the clan boss? Hi YouTube, this is Yasuo here. When you're gearing your champions, you want to think about your clan boss team as a whole and ask yourself questions like, are your champions able to self-sustain without the need of lifesteal gears? Are there any champions on your team that can consistently keep your team alive without the need of lifesteal? Does all your champions have either War Master or Giant Slayer Mastery? And these are not all, but some of the questions you need to ask yourself when you're looking to gear your champions that you are planning to put on your clan boss team. In this video, I will go over five artifact gear sets that you will probably want to use in clan boss depending on where you are in the game. For a very early game, Toxic Set will help your team put out damage. You can use this set if you're doing easy or normal clan boss. However, you only use this set when you don't have champions that can put up enough poison debuffs to fill the 10 debuff count. On the clan boss, you can only put up a maximum of 10 debuffs at any given time. But keep this in mind, you do not want to max out this set because once you move towards mid game and late game, you're not going to use the set again. So don't max it out, but use it for its poison stacks early game. The next gear set is used by probably over 90 to 95% of all players, and that is the lifesteal set. Lifesteal can be used early, mid, and end game, and is the most common set that is used in clan boss. Lifesteal will heal the attacker by 30% of the damage dealt. This gear also works great with War Master and Giant Slayer procs. This is because you're gaining 30% of the mastery procs too. That's in addition to the pure damage that your champion is putting out. In this clip, you can see my champions heal themselves for every time they put a pure damage on the clan boss. The heals are displayed in green. Now for the next set, some champions will use the stalwart gear. The stalwart set will mitigate 30% of the damage coming from AoE attacks. This set is really useful in clan boss because two of the clan boss's attacks are AoE. So with this gear, you're going to be mitigating a lot of damage. However, to run and use this gear, you either need a team to have a viable champion on your roster that does a consistent job in keeping your team alive. An example of a champion that does that is Bad Elkazar. Or you need a champion that can put up a leech debuff so that all your champions can attack the clan boss and gain life from the leech debuff. Or you might want a champion that has some type of lifesteal on their kit, kind of like Brockus or Tyrant. Stalwart can be used in all stages of the game. However, this set is often used during the end game. That's when your team has met a lot of the stat requirements and is looking to mitigate even more damage through the gears. The first three artifacts set requires four gears to get the bonus from the artifact. The next two artifacts that I will talk about only requires two gears to be equipped on the champion to receive the stat bonus. The first one is speed. If you have at least two speed gears on a champion, then that's a 12% stat bonus from your base speed that that champion gets. Sometimes, for early and mid game players, it can be difficult to reach the speed requirements for taking on the clan boss. The speed gears will help your champions to get to that speed. That 12% stat bonus will normally add somewhere between 10 to 12 speed. During the end game, there are some teams that will run a full speed team, and the champions on their team will have a full six pieces of speed gears equipped on the champion. If you build your champions to go this route, then your team needs to be heavily focused on speed. Your goal is to lap the boss as many times as possible. You also need champions on your team that can self-sustain or keep your team alive. Teams that run a full speed teams are built to lap the boss multiple times. 
Some speed teams are able to move twice for every one turn that the clan boss takes. The next set that I want to talk about is accuracy. For early to mid game, and even sometimes early late game, accuracy is heavily needed. At least from my experience, accuracy was one of the hardest stat to reach. And that was at least until I was able to farm spider consistently enough to get accuracy banner. However, you don't need to equip a champion with all six pieces of accuracy if you're using that champion in clan boss. But one set of accuracy will increase your accuracy stat by 40. The 40 additional stats and accuracy is a lot. If you're using a champion that has a debuff that you want to land onto the clan boss, then having one set of accuracy gear will help that champion land that debuff a lot more efficiently. So you definitely want that artifact set to be equipped onto the champion. The last thing I want to mention about Artifact is that you don't always have to use a full set of Artifact. You can always use Offset Gears if you need the substats. Sometimes the substats will give you more benefit to your champion than the actual bonus that comes from the Artifact set. For the Gears, here are the stats that are possible. You want either HP percentage or defense percentage on the gloves and chest plate. However, during end game, you want critical rate percentage or critical damage percentage. This will bring up the damage that the champion will put out. For boots, in most cases, you want speed boots. However, during late game, if you're running a speed to counter attack team, then you will eventually shift your speed boots over to HP percentage or defense percentage while staying speed to. That means that you need speed substats on your gears. For the rings, you want to have either HP or defensive stats. For necklace, you can go with HP, defensive, and if you're late game, you can ship over to a critical damage necklace in order to put out more damage. For banner, in most cases, you will want to use accuracy banner. If your champion does not need the accuracy, then use HP or defensive banner. Let me use my late game rosin for the example. Here's my weapon, the helmet, the shield, my gloves, which is critical rate percentage, and that's so that rosin can always crit, the chest plate, which is defense percentage, the boots, which is also defense percentage. The ring is flat defense, and that's to help Rosin survive. Necklace, and this is to increase Rosin's damage because he will always be critting. And banner is accuracy, so he can land his debuff. So let's look at these stats again. This is from Hell Hades, and I do think the stats are pretty spot on. However, I would recommend increasing the accuracy for Nightmare and Ultra Nightmare a bit. I would say 200 accuracy for Nightmare would be better, and for Ultra Nightmare, I like 250 accuracy. So this table here is missing the HP, and my rule of thumb for a target HP is that you multiply your target defense by 10. So for example, if the target defense is 3,500, then your target HP should be 35,000. Or, if your target defense is 3,000, then your target HP should be 30,000. That's my general rule. Basically, what it is, is for every 100 defense that you have, you should also try to get 1,000 HP. Alright, and that's all I have for today. If you like my video, then please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions or comments for me, then please let me know in the comments section below. Thank you very much.